Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy Morgan from CodeCloud. Welcome to today's lesson from our GitHub Copilot in Action course. In this video, you'll discover how GitHub Copilot can revolutionize your coding experience. If you're eager to explore more and unlock the full potential of AI-driven development, be sure to check out the complete course details below. Let's dive right in. So I have Visual Studio Code open here with my project that I'm going to be starting out, and I want to install GitHub Copilot. So we'll go to View and Extensions. And in here, we can search for GitHub. And you can see there's quite a few of them, but what we want is GitHub Copilot. And we'll click on Install. And it's going to install here, and it will log in. Now, sometimes this will ask for a GitHub login. It'll pop up the GitHub window. So you just log in through the web browser and then come in through here. But now we have the GitHub Copilot extension here. And we can say GitHub Copilot. And you can see here we have GitHub Copilot chat, which is included as a secondary extension, and I'm not sure why, but you want to make sure that chat is installed also. If you just install GitHub Copilot from here, it will install this, and you'll be ready to go. And as you can see, we go here, go down to the lower right-hand side, click on here, and we have status ready. Now in here, we can go to GitHub Copilot chat, which we just brought up earlier, and this is a chat window. Now, what makes this different is this isn't just a chat window that is you know, a small window to the outside world. This is a chat window that goes to GitHub Copilot. However, this chat window is aware of the code that's inside your editor here. That's what makes it special. So, you know, if you've been coding with something like ChatGBT, you have a web browser open on the other side, it's different from that because it can look at your existing code and use that as context with the things that you're asking. Now, if we click up here, we can see the GitHub Copilot chat. You can say disable completions. Now, I'll be honest that sometimes I do this when I just want to get in here and write code really fast and get something knocked out. I will disable the completions because I don't want them to get in the way. However, this is just a personal preference type of thing. We're going to show the completions here in this course and show how they work, but you can disable them. If you just want to code really fast and then go into Copilot and have it check it later, this is a great way to do it. You can edit some settings here. So GitHub Copilot has a bunch of settings. So let's take a look at those. We have window, new window profile. This specifies the profile to use when opening a new window, right? So I have a few different profiles on here and you can select these and this will change your window profile. Features, really it just has this uh, notebook as a default formatter. So this is a formatter that takes precedence over all other formatter settings, right? And then we have extensions here. We can see that I already have GitHub with Git authentication. So that's why I didn't have to authenticate when I installed GitHub Copilot is because I already had Git authentication installed here. And this basically says, you know, this is so you can connect to other Git things. And here we have GitHub Copilot. You can enable it or disable it for certain languages. So here we have the asterisk equals true, and that means everything set to true. So that means as a default, the first rule is GitHub Copilot can see any text file in my whole project. However, you can go here and override and say, I don't want it for plain text. I don't want it for markdown, scrim input or YAML. Um, these are all things. Sometimes I do enable the YAML if I'm working on YAML stuff. Sometimes it does make some good suggestions and it looks at your syntax. Um, Copilot isn't necessarily going to understand the context of what you're working on all the time, but it can be helpful with YAML once in a while. And in here you can set in things like uh, use instruction files. You can have a debug command enabled, etc. These are all part of preview right now, but by the time this you're watching this, they may be already in production. We have experimental settings. I don't mess with these too much because as it says, it's experimental. So these might be some really cool features that you're super interested in, but you don't have to do it. And they're all experimental. So who knows, you know, how it's going to work out. Generally, I kind of ignore these. And they have some workspace settings here that you can actually edit a JSON file and 
go right here, and you can put in instructions into settings.json if you'd like. So I'm going to not save that. And now we've got GitHub Copilot. We've got the chat window open here. Um, next, we're going to jump in and kind of show how the code completion works and how things work with GitHub Copilot. Thanks for watching. If you're ready to take your coding workflow to the next level with AI, don't miss our full GitHub Copilot in Action course here at CodeCloud. Experience hands-on labs, interactive games, and expert guidance to help you master GitHub Copilot and supercharge your productivity as a developer. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more fantastic content. Click the link below to get started with the complete course and experience AI-enhanced programming for yourself.